Greetings, PlatformCon 2022. I'm Skylar Bishop, and today I'm going to talk about the concept of a technical product manager as a part of the platform design track of this conference. But first, I'd like to tell you a story about younger me and how I came to understand the importance of this critical position in a product-driven platform engineering team. Now, it all started in 1995 when this young Jedi ventured off on his own to start an internet service provider in his parents' garage. He built three PCs, component by component, running Slackware in the 1.1.13 kernel. He kept exploring the technology world from Sprint to consulting with higher education to a wireless startup that dot-bombed in the early 2000s, and then spent almost a decade at the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers running computer models for the Everglades Restoration Program. He first found Perl, then Python, NumPy, and SciPy. He found that programming was fun, but the dark side wasn't quite finished with him. The sequester shrank the federal workforce, and he was forced to strike out again on his own, where he first learned of Puppet and Ruby and worked in a spinoff, using early versions of Docker Swarm and learning more Jedi ways in Git, CICD, and Agile development. Project management was a thing now, he saw, and the outcomes that the team did with their Scrum Master exceeded the abilities of the one. The Jedi and their software development lifecycle ways spoke to him, but he didn't completely understand them. He had much to learn, and the force was beginning to beckon to him. The dark side, though, kept trying to pull him in. To another startup, he leapt and learned the ways of the SRE Jedi, until the planet he was on was destroyed by the dark side, which showed him the error of his choices and the wisdom of learning from failure, and also the power of the dark side. And now into the clouds he yearned, landing at Cloud City. The view was amazing, and the opportunities were endless. But all was not as it seemed. After learning Terraform and the ways of infrastructure's code, he was then recruited by the cloud consulting Jedis to teach other aspiring Jedis. And for a few years, there was peace and quiet and growth. But there was still something missing in him that he couldn't understand. What was this strange force he had heard of and felt? But now he was an older warrior, and he sought to teach, grow, and to be a great leader himself. He learned that the greater powers of the Force could enable in him and his teams. And so today, we speak of the next chapter in this progression towards his desires for platform engineering excellence. And this journey brings me to my understanding of this product, the importance of product in platform engineering. So what is product management? Well, let's start with the TPM. Well, the TPM is a key role in bridging the gap between your platform team and its internal clients. And you may need a TPM if you have large numbers of stakeholders that disagree on whose priority is top, an unclear direction on key initiatives, a backlog that looks more like a scatter plot than a roadmap, a seemingly endless pile of support requests. And it's good to know that Jedis do not like to be stuck in support request swamps talking to strange persons. Product management is hard for internal platform teams. Imagine yourself leading an internal platform organization. You likely have poor direction by OKRs or any measurable achievable objectives. You likely have a strategy that will take you 18 plus months to meaningful achieve. You will always be distracted by instance support in the ever-growing pile of toil and tech debt. And on top of all this, you're working to stitch together a coherent platform that improves the output and experiences of your developers. So how do you decide what to do and when? Well, let's define what a product is now. Marty Kagan and Inspired writes that you should discover a product that is both valuable, usable, and feasible. And now Marty cut his teeth as VP of Platform and Tools at Netscape in the 1990s, and he knows a thing or two about products. Force is very strong in him. I believe that this is perhaps the quintessential definition of what a technical product is. You must know about the business, the value, how does your company make money, what do your customers expect and want from you. You must know about your users and how they want to consume your product. How usable is it? Finally, you must know about the team capacity and capabilities, and that's how feasible it is to achieve those goals. Let's talk about the differences between product and project management now. Where does each fit in? Well, both product and project management are important depending on the scope of your team and the organization size. 
Larger organizations and companies likely need both as the load of coordination between those larger numbers of teams increases the workload of the TPM. Smaller organizations, they can probably get by with just a TPM and may not need a project manager. And that's because product management is broader and more strategic and project management is narrower and more tactical. Some of the key product, project management responsibilities are resources, scope, and risk and issue management. Project management is about taking a given chunk of work, the project, in a given time frame and applying the right resources, the people, and ordering work to alleviate those defined risks. Product management, on the other hand, is vastly different and takes a different type of person. Some of the key product management responsibilities are prioritization, vision, and continuous improvement of that product. Product management focuses on a vertical software domain, and by deeply understanding the business goals and customers, they create a product vision. This vision is broken down into a tactical approach to achieve the thinnest scope towards the biggest early value, and then improving on that value continuously. So vision, design, and value are key outcomes that a product manager creates and keeps current. In some teams, product managers tend to also play the product owner role such that the team's work is prioritized to meet this product vision. So what makes a TPM well-suited for an internal platform team? Internal platform teams tend to have larger numbers of stakeholder groups than most other engineering teams. Each engineer, each stakeholder group requires some cognitive capacity of a product manager. And so by having a technical background, a TPM reduces the context switching as they can do elementary technical scoping without an architect or a platform engineer. Now, historically, Jedi developer clients haven't always seen what a good internal platform can look like. And so the TPM may also better imagine what a good developer experience looks like by applying their engineering background to their defined vision. The engineering background allows them to anticipate needs their clients may not even realize. But there are also anti-patterns that the dark side will try to lure you into. Some of those anti-patterns from the dark side include making sure that your product organization understands the problems being solved by infrastructure and how solving those problems adds value. Being seen as just a cost center is a dark side trick. Teams with TPMs tend to have better, well, or any SLOs, surface level objectives. And realize that dashboards are all lies. TPMs should want to understand the value, use, and patterns of their users. Dashboards breed false senses of complacency and are quickly out of date unless they are backed by service level objectives that drive those dashboards' contents. And finally, one of the biggest dark side anti-pattern trick is that tech debt accrues interest. Teams that don't realize this, they're usually failing at maintaining their backlogs. And this is perhaps one of the biggest tricks that they can play. But don't forget about your corporate culture. Here I mean things like the maturity of your product organization, the maturity of your prioritization process, the sophistication of your engineering org, and the trust level you have across different organizations. You may need to adjust your expectations, timelines, or both, depending on that culture. And your roadmap does you no good if your stakeholders only know how to communicate product prioritization via a Gantt chart. Don't expect a Gantt chart to magically transform into a vision or vice versa. Ask yourself a simple question. If I question the priority of an epic to a stakeholder, how would they react? Hopefully you're not on the receiving end of this. Is this how you prioritize though? Infrastructure teams historically operate under ticket systems where prioritization is by escalation versus value. If your stakeholder becomes defensive, you probably have low trust and you may need more push versus pull of information. If they can't answer the question, you're gonna need some Socratic and sleuthing skills. Understanding your ability to get to this prioritization should influence how you set your expectations and approach. TPMs must understand their stakeholder in the ways they expect to interact, interact and communicate. Now here's some things a TPM probably shouldn't do. They probably shouldn't manage the delivery of the team. I believe that's the engineering manager's job. 
they probably shouldn't manage the people on the delivery team. Again, engineering manager. They probably shouldn't manage the mentoring or growth of those team members. That's broader than just a TPM. And this is all because the TPM's value lies in their ability to clearly understand prior, broad prioritization, to set and drive the vision and align the approach and strategy of the team, and to articulate that via a roadmap. In a platform in an infrastructure or an infrastructure team, this is a tall value due, again, to the previously mentioned number of stakeholders of the platform. Here's some things the TPM probably should do. They should support, drive, and track large-scale cross-functional work by aligning requirements, milestones, and communication of progress across the organization. They should manage stakeholder relationships, drive this cross-functional discussions and collaboration. They should drive meetings, collaborative documents, and standards to improve how they work together as an organization and the knowledge of these internal clients. They should work to reduce drift within the organization initiatives and provide an unbiased perspective and feedback using their high-level views of the product for context. The implementation of roadmaps and standards for transparency and increased collaboration is also something a TPM probably should do. And finally, how does a TPM create value? Well, quite simply, it's focus. Humans have a very limited cognitive capacity, and so to take advantage of that limited capacity, we need to focus efforts. Focus efforts yield bigger outcomes. However, you have to balance focus with making bets by scoping minimum viable prototypes to thin vertical valuable slices so you can quickly see if a bet can be discarded or iteratively improved. Now, a TPM uses their understanding of both the technology and the product to order these bets such that the highest value gets the earliest work and then, to, then gets quick feedback on early prototypes to create those bigger outcomes. TPMs do allow you to be strategic as an internal platform. A TPM can give your engineers the space not on a moon populated by brown furry beasts, but in a place where they can create excellent products in focused ways that meaningfully improve your client developer's experience. Just make sure you also give your TPM the ability to focus. Like any key position, focus is important and the TPM is no different there. Throwing them in tens of status update meetings with 20 plus people in each is a surefire way to sap their productivity. And remember that the force works best when concentrating on one object. In summary, engineers like Jedi like to create great worlds and products. They care about the experience of using their products and the value it creates for the company. But they cannot do this alone. It is in an environment where they have the ability to do the most pressing work in efficient and effective ways that platform teams can flourish. And the TPM is a key component of that high functioning team. Hope you have a great rest of your conference. And I also hope to see you in Slack. Feel free to reach out to me in the Platform Engineering Slack instance on Twitter, or add me via LinkedIn, and just make sure to drop me a note there saying that you found me via this talk so I don't think you're trying to sell me something.